Joining us now, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and former spokesperson for Hillary Clinton, Philippe Reines. Philippe, it's good to have you. Thanks for being here. Um, Thank you, Katie. So you were you were in the war room, literally, <laughs> for those heady days at the at the end of 2016 when Comey came back out um, with the the investigation being back opened up and then the declination of, of charges. What was it like? It was horrible. Um, we thought we had put it behind us, what he had done and said in July, which was in and of itself bad enough. And you know it's not going to help. So it's really just a degree of how much it's going to hurt. And worse, when you know the fact set and you know there's nothing there, you get angry. You get more than angry. You get livid. And I think that's what you saw last night from President Biden. Um, in this moment, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? Unfortunately, there's nothing to do at all, because when the FBI director sends a letter to eight committees of Congress, which is basically begging to be leaked, you just have to grin and bear it. Um, you can do the normal and say this was open, this was closed. And as we just saw, Ian Sams do a great job of saying on page X, there is no evidence, but it takes a toll. And when it's 10 days out, it's a killer. Um, you know, it's pretty common that in situations like that, that it, it goes against the person. She obviously wasn't in office, but she was the, the favorite. It, it was dispositive. She lost because of what Jim Comey did. This is not 10 days out. This is 10 months out. There's quite a bit of time before the, the presidential election. Um, what what happens next with with the Biden team? How do they how do you think they go about this? Well, you know, it's a double whammy because the first thing is that they came out and did this at all. The second thing is what they did, the gratuitous language that I think both Ian and, and Phil Rucker referred to. But in the sense of B for what's happening, at least it's on the table. The president's age and memory and overall mental acuity has been something whispered about and it's actually spoken about pretty widely on the right. So let's get to it. People can vote whatever they want. If someone wants to vote for one guy over the other because they're taller or because they're heavier or because they went to their college, so be it. But Joe Biden is not running against uh, nobody. He's running against Donald Trump. We know who that is. If you want to vote based on age, come on. Donald Trump is 77. He's only three years younger than President Biden. If your father is 77 and your mother is 74, you don't say dad is dating a younger woman. You want to talk about health? Fine. President Biden has been incredibly transparent about his health going back since he was vice president. He has told us why he has a gait problem, why he walks the way he does, because he fractured his foot. President, uh, Former President Trump lied repeatedly about his health problems. He went to Walter Reed Hospital without telling anyone why for more than a year and a half. He came within an inch of his life when it came to having COVID. So if you want to vote for health, you want to vote for age, then you're going to vote for Joe Biden. If you want to vote for memory, Donald Trump and Phil Rucker also reference this. Donald Trump has been walking around for months saying we're looking at having World War II. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not a Ph.D. in history. I'm pretty sure we're up to World War III. Um, why do you think that the age is such a problem for Biden and not for Trump, given everything that you just said? And, and I know you said it's whispered about, but I mean, if you talk to voters and you look at polling, it's a, it's. It's not just whispered. People are widely concerned about this. And it's not reporters saying it. It is voters telling pollsters it. Yeah, no, it's, it's like I said, it's a legitimate concern. But I think it's the responsibility of the media and, frankly, the Biden campaign, the Biden White House, to make very clear. Look, they can't make President Biden any younger. They can make it very clear that Donald Trump is old. If that's what you have to do, then that's what you have to do. If they're going to attack him on his health, then attack right back. You can't. You can't make some of what they're not, but you can make sure that the opponent is portrayed accurately. I think it's cosmetic stuff. You know, going back for a long time since the advent of TV, we are a people that look at people and make judgments. And President Biden walks slowly um, and he, you know, he squints for whatever reason. I mean, I think it's easier for us to say, why does he do that? And it's a lot harder to actually do that job. Like, I know people at the highest levels of the Biden administration. I count them as friends, as former colleagues. They know, I mean, they wish that we all, one at a time, all 330 million of us, 
could parade in there. And look, we can't do that. So it's incumbent upon others, the campaign, the White House, the media. But it's also incumbent upon people like Jim Comey and Robert Hur to not disenfranchise an entire nation because they want to see their name in the paper or say out loud. I mean, Robert Hur said, just by virtue of Joe Biden being elderly, that he had a memory problem. I mean, I I'm sorry. I don't think it works that way. I think we have a pretty large elderly society who remembers things a lot better than I might on any given day. So, I mean, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything.